one. Hello, so I am here today with Ryan Stevens, who is a fellow surveyor and a registered valuer, which I am not, um, because we want to start bringing other commercial surveyors' opinions to you of what they're doing. And Ryan's also um, a commercial investor. So we're going to talk through a few of the key valuation questions that you all ask me all of the time so that you can get a different view today. So thank you for giving us your time, um, Ryan. It's good to have you with us today. No problem. Nice to be here. Um, so do you want to introduce yourself just a bit about your background, um, you know, what you do, what you invest in yourself? Uh, yeah, so I am a um, chartered surveyor uh, and RICS registered valuer. Um, I graduated from university in 2008 um, after having done a property a surveying degree, um, then qualified as a chartered surveyor in 2010. Um, basically carried on working as a chartered surveyor between 2010 and, and today. Um, and in that time, also pretty much identically, I, I've also been investing in property. Um, I started off just like everyone else, pretty much just doing residential buy to lets. Then around sort of 2012, 13, moved into the HMO space. Um, and then since 2018, I've been investing in industrial commercial property. So that's like warehouses, uh, storage, that sort of thing. Um, and been, been buying that sort of stuff between now and then. Okay, fantastic. So actually, you know, you, you and I have been on a similar journey to the people that we now help ultimately um which is why we want to help them do the same thing because it's not always easy even with a professional background so if you don't have the professional background it's probably um even harder so um why did you decide to start investing in industrial um it, it kind of obviously with my background in commercial surveying it sort of felt a bit more like coming home as it yeah. were uh you know Res resi was always a, a little bit alien um, uh, but quite frankly, just the returns are just so much better, so, so much better. And, you know, the, the legislation is more balanced uh, between landlord and tenant. Um, you know, it's not exactly it's sort of skewed in favour of the landlord, but it's definitely not skewed in favour of the tenant um, uh, like, like residential is. Um, and, yeah, I can tell you that the, the, the three industrial estates I've got, you know, I mean, I've got sort of 70 tenants within those estates, but. I can tell you now for a fact, I make a whole load more money with those, even on, you know, capital repayment, quite aggressive pay downs on, on the capital side. I still make a decent profit every month relative to, uh, you know, relative to my residential stuff, which I've, you know, some of which I've had for 12, I could say 12 years now. Um, Absolutely. So, and what was the difference in, in kind of your, your return, would you say, percentage wise? it's hard to provide a, a genuine compar comparison because like some of the properties we've bought have, have been um, so the, the, you know, the first one we, we uh, me, me and my business partner bought in 2018, the commercial one, it, it's 38,000 square foot. So, you know, <laughs> to compare yeah, it's that, hard to, it's hard to compare. Everything. Yeah. To compare that to a, you know, an average, an average sort of uh, two up, two down mid terrace, which is the sort of house I like I live in it, it is about, you know, eight, 800 square foot, maybe so it's, you know, yeah. 900 square foot uh, Victorian terrace in in in, she in, in Sheffield, um, whereas you know a, th a thirty eight thousand square foot we've got forty seven units there, um, you know in pound shillings and pence uh, we're, we're producing thirty uh, two hundred and thirty thousand pound a year in rent, um, off that. Uh, so it's it's just always a, it's a completely disingenuous comparison uh, to compare that to a buy to let. Um, yeah, it's absolutely. Just, oh, I mean, that that it might frighten someone thinking about scaling up to that, but actually, you know, um, how many houses do you need to generate that sort of rental income, and how much management is it compared to buying an industrial park with that many tenants and then being more hands off? I think that's kind of the point of why we invest in what we invest in. I'm oh, more God, yeah. at the moment, but um, it's good that, you know, <clears throat> you're in the industrial sector. And I'd say at the moment, um, so if we move on to kind of how the different sectors in commercial are performing from your view as a valuer and an investor, you know, obviously industrial is performing its socks off at the moment uh, and is very hot, you know, there's lack of supply, the rents are going up, so it, it's a good place to be. Um, what about the other sectors? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, industrial is great, and that's that's why I, I I'm liking it at the minute. Um, like like you say, you, you've only got to wait a month, and rents are going up even further. Um, you know, it's sort of constantly reaching new highs uh, across the board. Um, offices, I think, are struggling a little. Offices have obviously got that underlying sort of good side in in terms of sales, at least. Yeah. Uh, because they've got the permitted development um, up, up to fifteen hundred square meters, so you know people are still buying the, these offices and, and, and converting them to residential, yeah. and that's stripping supply out of the market, um, which is keeping the, the prices propped up. Um, so that any demand that is there, you know, the, the, the prices are still, you know, and when I say demand, I mean demand for genuine office users. Yeah. Um, the, the the price is being propped up by that by that reduction in supply yeah um in terms of office occupancy however um the 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 serviced offices are, are always going to do sort of fairly fairly well um providing you're providing the right product um yeah. you know parking is all is the the perpetual problem um <laughs> with with things like that and uh, as with any any you know commercial space um you know, if you if you can provide something with parking free or at a you know at a fairly cheap rate, then you're going to do fairly well just about anywhere. Um, retail, obviously struggling. Brought you know, I mean, again, I live in Sheffield, and, and the the centre of Sheffield, far which is called Fargate, um, is dead. Uh, I saw something in in the local rag the other day that I think I think it said. Um, near on half the shops in Fargate are, uh, are vacant. Yeah, and that uh, is happening in a lot of city and town centres. And I would say, um, you know, I do invest in high street retail and I help other people do it, but it's very location specific. Um, you know, it's not one size fits all, and you have got to be very careful about where you invest in. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, just just around the corner from from where I live, it, it's a bit middle class. Um, you know, yeah. and there's a lot of uh, small independent shops, nice cafes, nice bakers, that sort of thing. And it's, you know, that's, it's thriving. Uh, there's not a single to let board up. Um, exactly. So it's, the it's, it's just, hard, it's isn't it? sure you, yeah, it's making sure you're boxing clever. Uh, I think rather, rather than just sort of saying, I'm going to go for retail and any shop that comes up, I'm going to buy it because <laughs> yeah. you might... You might you might uh, you might sort of cut, you know come a cropper, um, so it's just about making sure you you sort of. I, 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 whenever people ask me about buying re- shops and what have you, I always say, look, go and spend half a day on a Saturday afternoon or you know Saturday morning, go and buy a, a few coffees in the lo- in the local coffee shop and just sit and people watch and sit how how many people are there you know how easy is parking, um, you know best one in the world you know and we can all be as green environmentalists as we want but people want to, what they want to pull up in a car you know leave the kids in playing the playing the tablet get out do do a few bits and bobs and then, and then get off to the next um to the next place yeah absolutely. you're right convenience is king when it comes to retail i i agree okay yeah. well that's you know so so guys that's not you know ryan's saying more or less the same things as me which is good uh, we don't always have the, exactly the same opinions on everything but broadly surveyors will have broadly the same opinion of what's going on in the market as long as they're in touch of course so in terms of um so some of the investors who are starting to diversify into commercial they have a lot of questions about how commercial valuation works because it is very different to how resi value works in terms of bricks and mortar whereas commercial valuation is all about security of income capitalization of of rental income which can be quite difficult to get your head around so what would you say are the most important factors for value in a commercial property? Hmm. Well, j- just before I answer that question, you mentioned about the the the, the, the difficulty in transitioning. Yeah. The, the one the one way I try and explain it as badly as as bad a, an analogy as it may be, uh, a good segue is HMO valuations. So. HMO, and I hear I'm talking about the larger HMOs, you know, yeah. in an Article 4 area with sui generis planning, you know, um, with a license. So the, these large HMOs where you capitalise the income, okay, that is a fairly comfortable trans, you know, segue and, and 
most property investors have either done, know somebody, or have been on enough courses to, and have sort of you know, been on Facebook a sufficient amount of time yeah. to have got the capitalizing, you know, taking 10 grand a year, just to keep the numbers super simple, yeah. taking 10 grand a year and multiplying that by 10, yeah, is, a, is, a, is a, an extraordinarily basic, you know, mathematical process. And that is effectively the, the again, very basic way in which yeah. we as surveyors, as, as valuers, capitalise commercial rents. OK, so in terms of the important things, in terms of you know getting that that 10 times multiple, that's called the YP without trying to sort of get, get overly technical. Um, I, I can see Kirsty's. You, you're just like oh, don't, don't, don't mention no, I, i'm just going it's good it's good for them to actually hear the jargon because if you want to invest in commercial property you've got to understand and yeah. you've got to be able to relate to the valuers so so it's good so yp is the year's purchase um and that's how many years it takes you to get your initial capital back or how many years of rent um so say you buy something for a hundred thousand pound and it's producing ten thousand pounds per annum one way of doing that calculation is, is it's a 10 percent yield another way of talking about it is it's 10 yp it's going to take 10 years to purchase that that initial outlay back okay yeah. so in order to get the yp up or the yield down so that the, the, they diverge um you know so in in commercial property a lower yield is good it is <laughs> so the lower the yield, the higher the year's purchase, which, which means the, high, the higher the, 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 the more multiples of the income the property will be worth. Yeah. OK. So as a relatively extreme example, let's say we get Tesco on a superstore on a, on a brand new 25 year unbroken lease. That's the nice, easy, you know, nice, easy <laughs> sort of you know, thing that, again, people can wrap their head around. Um, so Tesco, 25 year lease, big superstore, might be producing 100 grand a year in rent. OK, we might capitalize that on, on let's say, a 5 percent yield. Now, if I get my calculator out, so I can't do the mental maths. <laughs> 100,000 divided by 0 0.05. So that's worth two million quid. OK. Yeah. So what are, the, what are the factors that's made me arrive at that 5%? Um, well, first of all, it's the comparables. And just get that straight out of the way, okay? Comparables are the, the big thing when it comes to, to valuing any property, be that houses, HMOs, serviced accommodation, commercial, you know, industrial estates, whatever. When we as valuers look at, come, you know, come to actually doing the mathematics, what we do is we say, right, what have similar things sold for? You know, is it comparable? Is it similar? So, for example, we would probably look in this example, we, we, we'd be fairly sort of loose in terms of the geography as to how far we look for other big commercial investment, commercial Tesco investments. 100 miles, 150 miles, where we may even look nationally, quite frankly, because the type of person or the type of company who buys big Tesco investments aren't really that bothered where it is uh you know they're more than likely going to be pension funds that sort of thing yeah. so you know horses for courses little two up two down mid terraces, quarter or half a mile yeah for your comparables big national tesco investments so i'd be i'd be quite comfortable looking you know certainly looking within england and i'd say right what of other similar tesco investments sold for just as a start for 10 yeah now the next thing then is then taking that evidence and because none of it you know the, the evidence won't be perfectly aligned with your property it's then making adjustments tweaking up or down on that yield that's been achieved elsewhere and saying right is the subject property is the property that i'm valuing the same better or worse so we look at the, the first thing will be that the, the tenant. Is it Tesco? Is it McColls, for example, who have just gone bust? Yeah. Is it, is it Asda? Is it Morrison's? Um, is it Lidl? All that, you know, these little things. So that's the start for 10. And then we'll say, right, okay, well, you know, are, are, are Tesco better than Company X? 
the next thing is the, is the length of the lease yeah. or how much what, what's called term certain okay so the term certain is how long it is from today until the first point at which the tenant could legally exit the, exit the lease now that may be the end of the lease or it may be what's called a break clause okay which gives the tenant the right to exit the property early subject to complying with certain certain clauses within the lease so it could be that on, on this 25 year unbroken lease that you've got 24 and a half years remaining. So that's a 24 and a half year term certain. It may be, however, that there's a break clause after 10 years and you just have to take that into account. And again, then benchmark that against the comparables. So if the comparable, for example, is in, let's say the next town, um, fairly comparable town, but your property has got 24 and a half years remaining and that one only had five years remaining, then you're going to say, okay, well, that actually makes my property better, makes my income more secure. Okay. Security is good. That's what we're looking for as surveyors, as valuers ultimately is, is security. How certain is it? And then it's never going to be absolute certainty, but how certain is it that I'm going to receive that hundred thousand pounds every year? Okay. Or 25,000 pounds a quarter. Okay, if it's going to be certain for a long length of time, because I've got a good tenant who is likely to pay me. Okay, it's not Joe Smith who's running the car mechanics, um, you know, and it's a one man band and he's got nine kids, uh, you know, and he's, he's, he's only been trading three months. You know what I mean? He's going through like a dodgy breakup with his wife. Um, and, you know, that's that that's the sort of the, the again, the other extreme. Um, so we're looking for certainty We're we're looking for how out regularly and easy is it going to be to, to get your money um and then we'll say right okay well you know that that property that may be sold for six percent up, up the road the other tesco investment well my problem you know the property that we're valuing because this is, a, this is a 25 year unbroken lease okay well there's 24 and a half years remaining that one only had five years remaining on the lease and it sold for six percent so it's reasonable that we bring the yield in a little bit now unfortunately this is where the art of evaluation <laughs> rather than the science yes. <laughs> comes into things and then it's just fat down to the valuer's opinion okay there's no absolute mathematical you know x plus y equals z in doing this some valuers may come down a percent, some may come down half a percent, some may, you know, some may not adjust it at all, um, which would be fairly harsh, but nonetheless, you know, it, it, it all depends. Now, what you would expect, and, and as, as investors, what I always say to people is you must have a, a good, solid, what's called a basket of evidence. Okay, another another sort of nice phrase for you, uh, a basket of evidence. Okay, what that means is, you don't just want one comparable. Yeah. If you're going and looking to buy a property, okay, make sure you've got four, five, six, seven comparables before you buy it, okay? Because the last thing you want is the, is the surveyor, the valuer struggling to find evidence to help, to, you know, to help justify the valuation you want or need, okay? Because we're not there to do you any favors. OK, we won't just put the number that you want just because you what you've asked for it. We must be able to justify the number that we put on that valuation report. So if, for example, you've you're buying a let's just say a nail salon um, with a with a, a residential flat above it. OK, now, yeah. if, if you're buying a nail salon, that's perfectly fine. And again, if you've got a personal tenant in there, just just some, you know, uh, again, just just a, an individual. OK, that's that's cool. That, that's great. What you then need to look for is other comparables where you've got a, a retail user, what used to be class A1, who is now class E. OK, so any class E use class with hopefully a residential property, you know, residential flat above. OK, and look for sales of those types of properties. Now, where you'd look for those. The first place I always recommend for things like that is, is EIG, uh, Essential Information Group, um, which, which is an auction website, EIG, okay? Um, it, it's like, it's a, national, uh, it's a national website and it pulls information from all the, all the auctioneers 
uh, into just one convenient place. Um, you do have to you, you do have to subscribe to it, although I think you can get a free um, uh, a free trial if you just ring you and ring them up. Um, yeah, I think it's three days free trial, but it's well worth subscribing to. I agree because it just takes all the legwork out of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And do you know what? I don't. I think it's only like five hundred pound a year. Yeah, it's not astronomical. Yeah, um, there are other there are other websites. There's something like called CoStar um, that is phenomenally expensive. I think it's about a thousand pound a month. Um, it is. I mean, it's what it's what all the big professional consultancies use, isn't it? Yeah. So I, I I use I use CoStar. Um, but that's because I'm doing it every single day. Yeah. And it's for my job. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm using it to earn, to earn the money, to earn money actively every day. Um, but EIG, especially if you're doing shops and uppers, or, you know, to, certainly the little things, yeah. there, there'll, be, there'll be dozens of those in, in, in most, you know, most towns and uh, maybe not villages, but towns and cities. Um, you know, you'll, and that's a real good start for 10. The next place you, you want to look um, is is Right Move. The Right Move, as, as Kirsty will have probably told you, all, the Right Move has got a commercial section. Um, include the sub the, the sold subject contract uh, filter, okay, and ring the agent up. You know, commercial surveyors are. I always say they're a little bit more grown up than estate agents. <laughs> you know, we're, we're the grown ups in the room, um, <laughs> and. Whereas residential, you know, residential estate agents are, oh no, 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 we can't tell you that. You know, um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're sort of, they're, they'll just follow a very, very basic process. Whereas commercial surveyors, they know how the world works. You know, if you just say, look, I'm looking at buying a property, I'm, I just want to get some comparable evidence to, you know, for, for the valuation. Um, you know, you, you're not going to win every time. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, you're not going to get every single surveyor saying, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll send you everything I've got. Um, but you know, more often than not, a commercial surveyor will, will be relatively you know, willing and able to help. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you might catch them on a busy day, but actually, you know, people say, "Well, why, why would they help you?" Well, because you're a local commercial investor who might well need their help in future to let a property, to sell a property. They might have properties that um, they can send you, want you to, to buy. That from you want them. to buy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know. I mean, I also buy in there in terms of so a lot of a lot of the investors that work with me find it really difficult to engage with um, commercial surveyors. I think part of that is because they feel like it's their first investment, so they don't know what to say. But what I always say is that, look, surveyors are people, people. We spend all our time out viewing properties, talking to people, talking to other surveyors. And, and it, it literally is just be professional be credible and and be polite and most of us all talk to you isn't it yeah, yeah. you don't <laughs> have to know the intricacies about about how to value and how to you know how to work out your ITs ZAs and you know what you what you a over 10 for your first floor I mean I'm, I'm talking about absolute garbage I'm sort of talking like a textbook but you don't have to know all that <laughs> okay don't. again like like you like say just just be nice you know i think most of the courses that people have made probably been on and i've i've sort of experienced people saying this and i've got an impression that most of the courses people go on like like you know like the big providers they put commercial up on this big pedestal yeah and like it's a really like oh this is like the god level in, in investing um and, and you know you can't do it until you've been investing for 10 years and you've got to come in like on fourteen thousand courses with us um <laughs> you know and, and you've got to have like three badges on your, <laughs> on, on your lapel I know. and you actually don't it's just you just need to know what you need to know and connect with the right professionals and then you can yeah. do it you know understanding a little bit about commercial leases is going to serve you very well yeah you, you know and again you don't have to know every single piece of case like anyway, I'm, I'm talking about like understanding 10 things yeah okay. like what what what's fri for repairing insuring and what difference does having a break clause in a lease make and yeah. what difference does whether it's a sole trader a limited company a plc yeah. you know those, those 54, kind of 54 act exclusion i think is always a big thing yeah um, whether they've got the right to renew at the end of yeah. their tenancy or not um, but you need to be able to talk about it in the right language you're right yeah uh, but there's, there's probably 10 things 
yeah. that, that you need to know on commercial leases that will really set you apart and and again just get just get you going okay uh, and again you don't have to know about Mott Hay and Anderson and, and you know specific <laughs> user clauses and I'm bringing back eight yeah it, that yeah I can see that look in your face the, <laughs> yeah okay oh all, those, all those caters <laughs> that you have to cram in your head and like, yeah, try to remember 28% <laughs> discount on rent review um <laughs> Again, you don't have to know all that sort of rubbish that we as you know, surveyors who, who are genuinely in in the mud every day need need to know. Yeah. And even then, we probably don't remember it all because it, you, you just get your textbook out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, don't be scared about picking the phone up to surveyors. Like I say, they're normally very, very nice. They're, they're grown up and they know. And again, even if you just say to him, look, I'm I'm just starting to invest. I'm I'm looking at buying something, even if it's not with them. They'll like I say, they'll be really willing, you know, willing willing to help. Yeah, they will. And look, look, there's two of us sat here talking to you right now, and we're pretty approachable and pretty much just like you. And um, that's what all the other surveyors are like as well. I mean, just don't phone them on a Friday afternoon because they'll probably be in the pub. Um, yes, that's yeah, that's where we are on a Friday it's afternoon. Like agents. Um, especially agents um in in the same way as solicitors um it's friday's completion day yeah you know uh fr fridays is, is is the day that you really don't want to be hassling uh hassling an agent uh in the same way that hassling hassling a solicitor on on a friday um is probably not going to get you very far <laughs> uh, yeah it's a good tip actually um so yeah. i think you know the, that was really useful ryan thank you because i think that will really help people just start to unpick some of the questions they often have about well what do valuers think about and where do i find some comparables and how does it all work and i think the thing that surprises most people coming from residential to commercial is how far away the comparables can be depending on what you're investing in you know they'll yes. say well that's in a different town. Yes, but that doesn't matter because that's how commercial works. If it's a very similar town and a very similar investment, that's okay to use mm. as a comparable, you know? Yeah. Not uh, again, it, it, it's horses for courses. So your your little um, shop that's let to an individual, your, your nail salon with a, with a residential upper, yeah. is, it's, you know, you probably want, you try, want to try and at least stick to the same town yeah. with, with something like that. But again, then again, you're going to probably be able to. Yeah. because there's going to be lots and lots of uh, of shop you know little retail with uppers um in that in that town and then again it's just about tweaking it up or down you know are you are you in a particularly nice village or part of the town relative to the not so nice yeah exactly part, part of town but again that's just like residential you know it's again don't, don't think it's massively dissimilar um no, the calculation's done a different way, but it, it's not it's not actually that dissimilar. And I think you There's know a lot the, of underlying principles, I think, is, is, the, yeah. is the, the way to say it. Um, but again, then then you know, taking it to the again right through the spectrum to the other extreme, if it is a massive if you've got the pockets to be investing in massive Tesco superstore investments, you know, looking 100, 150 miles is perfectly perfectly acceptable. Yeah, and I think that, you know, surprises a lot of investors who, you know, but, but you're right, you just, you have to just, it has to be comparable and you're not going to have another Tesco in the same town no, <laughs> of that no. size, you know, it just is. Or even if you do, it, it probably, it probably won't have transacted. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, but yeah, and they need to be recent, don't they? But that, that's the other interesting thing is for commercial, you know, for resi, they need to be really, really recent, but actually in commercial, we'll kind of push a bit further out on yeah to, time, to, again again the, the more recent the better yeah it's not always the rule with everything uh but two years perfectly accept you know perfectly acceptable um again what you want to start doing is again if you're really starting to get into it and really active actively wanting to look at and buying yeah. you know that yeah. property is once you do start gathering your comparables and you've got seven or eight or nine or whatever you hopefully then the ones that are most um, chronologically further away and geographically further away they're the ones that you want to put less weight towards okay and again weight is, in, is, a, is another sort of key word that you want to be learning so weight so how much how useful is it okay so the ones that you know the, the, the property that's banged next door that sold a month ago that's obviously very useful um, in terms of its use its weight okay the one that's sort of in you know right on the other side of town and sold two years ago 
you know, it's probably relatively useful, but it, it may be sort of towards the bottom end of the pecking order, uh, so to speak. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Well, thank you. That's going to, you know, people are going to be going, oh my God, this is so useful. It makes so much sense. And it's good to um, have a registered valuer who's active because I'm not a registered valuer these days. I don't actively go out and do valuations for other people. I work on my own portfolio and I can explain how it works, but it's, you know, it's good to hear it from you because you're out there doing it every day. Um, one of the other questions I was going to ask you is what can investors do to help you as a valuer? Um, you know, what can they do to help themselves, but also to, to help you? Because I think one of the things that springs to my mind is that the speed people expect valuations to be done at sometimes makes it difficult for you to do the best job. And therefore, if you're doing it at speed, you're going to err on the side of caution, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so typically speaking, we get um, we get given 10 days from the point of instruction yeah. to turn the valuation around and the typical rule is we get up to five days to do the inspection and then another five days from inspection to go to, to turn the report around that's the broad rule of thumb yeah. with, with most lenders and as you say we, we have to provide comparables within our report okay if we can't provide those comparables or if we can't easily come across the, you know, the ones that help you we are going to be cautious yeah. OK, because, again, everything's got to be justified. So if we can only come across, a, you know, a few comps that are at 10 percent. OK. And you're you're wanting on and again, sometimes needing a valuation at 9 percent. OK, which is going to capitalize your rent by 11, 11 and a bit times multiple. OK, then you it, it, do get in, put, you know, giving us the comparables that you've found. Um, and again, put, doing that in a professional, humble manner, um, you know, not telling the value how to do the job, but just the way that I always do it. And again, I'm just sort of speaking from me for my own experience of having, having the shoe on the other foot as an investor. I just say, look, I know you've not got a bag load of time, time to do these reports because notwithstanding the fact that we get five days, what that means is that we've got to probably do two days more worth of inspections. And then we've got to write that report up where somebody, and then we've got to answer the post valuation questions that somebody's chasing us on, um, you know, and then before you know it, you're at four and a half days and you're thinking, Oh, sugar, you know, I <laughs> yeah. need, to, need to get that report. Um, so putting together a, a good list of comparables, um, you know, and, and not just sort of saying, one two three acacia avenue 100 grand because that's not going to do anybody and especially in commercial not yeah. going to do any anybody any favors um com commercial comparables are always always and this is probably why curse has been talking about it um they're a little bit more difficult to come across yeah. it's not like residential where you can just click on right move um and, you, and you've got 50 comparables there all within a quarter of a mile um you know we we need to do active digging um and it is usually a case of phoning the other surveyors going on costar going on eig um what you need to do in reality is is put a list together of, of you know the, the whole transaction so the full address who was the tenant what the rent the tenant was paying okay what that what that rent equates to okay because that can be quite important and again without being massively overly technical, it could be that it was under rented. Yeah. Okay. And there's something, you know, that whilst the, the initial yield, and again, I'm not going to blow anyone's mind or try not, but there's something called an, an, an initial yield. And then there might be what's called a reversionary yield. Okay. Which, which means that if, if it's under rented, it, it, the, the yield will come down a little bit when it, when the rent goes up. Yeah. Okay. Cause again, rent goes up, yield goes down. So we need to know, you know, what the what the passing rent was. Maybe a look of comments as to what the perceived market rent would be, um, and the, and and who was involved, who, who was involved in that transaction. Okay, um, that's that's a big thing because if you say, oh, John Smith at ABC Surveyors Limited told me about this, then it, what it means is I can I probably know John Smith because surveying's a small world, yes, it is. Very, very inbred, um, you know. <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to send John a quick text message saying, John, you know, I understand you sold one, two, three Acacia Avenue. Can you just give me some, you know, can you just tell me the, uh, or maybe even take a photo. Is, are they correct? Is that correct? And he might send me a thumbs up or he might just say, yeah, you know, um, nice shop, 
flat was a bit rough. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, people need to understand the amount of work you have to do to be certain about your valuation, which is comparables, double checking comparables, but also you're going to get questions back from the lenders as your client. So you'll send your valuation and then they'll go, well, what's this? And we want a bit more detail on this and what, you know, so you've got all that going on as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I had one. I had one the other day. I did a valuation. Um, it was a develop a sort of a nine flats development site, um, and I I'd done the reinstatement valuation, which is like the rebuild cost calculator. Um, now, because we're not quantity surveyors, we use something called BCIS, the Building Cost Information yeah. Service, which is the, the the official RICS like ready reckoner. It's like it's just a calculator, uh, and it's for valuation surveyors, but who aren't obviously quantity surveyors who go out and price yeah. jobs for for building every day. Um, and it's just acknowledged that we will use that, and it's a it's a good enough. You know, it's not something you want to be actively using if you are developing, uh, but it's seen as it's seen as a good enough you know answer for for valuers. Um, and so I put the rebuild ca- calculation in, and it had come out fairly high. Um, and the the broker was kicking up a bit of a fuss about it, so I had to then go back to the panel manager and justify why I'd put one point whatever million quid as the rebuild value when the actual valuation, you know, the, the, the market value of the property was only about 400 grand. Yeah. Um, and you know, it was easy enough, but it, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, Even- exactly. And all the time adds up. So, you know, when we're sitting here going, why does it take value is so long and why can't it be done more quickly? And what, well, the fact of the matter is that the more time you can give a valuer, the more likely it is they'll give you the most realistic valuation and so you need to build that into what you're doing and not not be in a mad rush and not be so your funding strategy you need to accept that it is going to take at least 10 days sometimes a bit more at the moment because things Mm. are busy um you know accept so for me if you if you know that you need lending then build in a three-week period for your valuation yeah i mean the the story i always tell is i uh when was it? It was this time last year, actually, May, uh, May last year. I'd just finished renovating um, an industrial estate in Rotherham. Um, 17, it was a single unit when we bought it and we turned it into 17 units. I spent in, in the weeks leading up to, to the actual surveyor coming out, I spent three, what, what accounted by the time I'd done a few hours here, a few hours there, half a day here. Uh, I spent three full days gathering comparables in advance for, for, for the valuer admittedly i also went a stage further and actually just wrote the bloody report <laughs> yeah because you can <laughs> um so i wrote the full lo- a full location a full description you know i did all the floodplain I, I i mean admittedly i then sent him sent him all our certificates and what have you by email which is something i always recommend people doing so if you if you've had works done gas certificates electrical certificates building regs sign off um P- architects practical uh, practical com- completion certificates pcc's if you've had them if if that's been done um you know everything else all, all the leases and what have you um but but i i did a full pack for him and i so i spent three days researching comparables um i knew for a fact i mean that the valuation fee was 2400 from memory uh 2400 quid plus VAT. I know for a fact he he would have allocated no when he might have allocated half a day, you know maybe maybe a full day, um, including the exactly. inspection. And I think that's what's important is that people think, well, I'm paying two and a half thousand pounds. They they just need to go and do their job. Well, you can have that attitude if you want, but you need to understand that they're looking at multiple properties doing multiple valuations and they'll do their job to the best of their ability, but they are never going to spend three full days trying to find comparables. And that's just know. one second. Sorry. <laughs> modern, modern day living. We're like, we are doing this on a Saturday morning, guys. <laughs> but yeah, so that, you know, that we'll, we'll wrap up shortly. But that, I mean, that, that's kind of the point is that people have this full value is just need to do their job. And why haven't they done that? And why haven't mm. they? Well, you need to appreciate that valuers will do their best, but it can only be their best. So if you've got time and you want the best valuation, then work with the valuer. Don't don't have this 
opinion of, well, I'm paying for this service. Well, yes, you are, but they've got a time limit. And so anything you can do to help them. So, you know, you are a valuer and an investor and you're yeah. sitting there going, well, I'm going to get a much better valuation because obviously you can't do your own valuation ethically. Yeah. Um, if I spend as much time as possible and give them the best comparables, then I'm going to get a better valuation. So you do that as a professional and an investor. Uh, and I would urge people to follow. I'll, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's just worth it. You know, unless, unless you're a city stockbroker uh, earning 50 grand a day. Yeah. I, I will bet. I will be, you know, be willing to bet a large part of my portfolio that spending the time getting the comparables to help justify the valuation that you want or need okay is going to be bloody well worth it yeah okay um it, it's just it's just going to help you get get over the line and, and and again justify why your property is worth x yeah whatever, whatever x back. may be yeah. like, okay what we don't do is we don't just pull a pull a figure out of our backside mm-hmm. um and just say yep hundred thousand pound job done um it's it's got to be comparables calculation rationale okay Uh, the rationale is why we've used these comparables and how they've how how they have helped us arrive at the figure and then you know final number yeah absolutely and so let's just end on the age-old question that people that all investors want to know from from surveyors and valuers why can valuations differ so much from one valuer to another <laughs> um it's an art not a science well it's an art and a science yeah. it's not an art and a science so there is the, there is the the mathematical process of you know that property sold for, for as we were saying earlier six percent that property sold for 5.5 percent but again, just just working in the world where we've only got two comparables, let's say your property should fit somewhere in the middle of between five and a half and six percent. Well, do you split the difference, you know, yeah. or do, or do you maybe come down closer to the five and a half at five uh, at five point six, or is it maybe up towards the top at five point eight or five point nine? Um, and no two valuers will come out the same. You know, one, there's no real reason and nobody, you know, nobody's wrong because it's just an opinion. Um, you know, the, the, the typical rules of thumb are that, um, and this is in, in case you're getting sued, quite frankly, so <laughs> yeah. this, this, is the, this is the bottom <laughs> line. to either of us, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, this is the bottom line is, is that um, on a residential valuation, you, you can be, and I'm talking about a traditional resi yeah. property, you, you can be 5% either way that's the tolerance um for commercial it's it's 10 percent um and and then but it also goes up to 20 percent uh in terms of the tolerance um yeah for- actually that's a really good point because there therein lies the answer to how can they be so different well because there is quite a big tolerance and mm. it is ultimately an opinion and so the best thing you can do as an investor is work with the valuer and give them as much information as you can to help them arrive at an informed opinion and as Ryan quite rightly said kind of right at the beginning don't invest in commercial properties and commercial property investments that are the only one of its kind in its locality like Mm. that's never a clever thing to do so we we just no, no. Like and again know. again with with HM again and again just to sort of make the segue between HMOs again what most people kind of get and commercial you know if you're if you're buying the only if you're buying or or converting a property to an HMO it's the only one in the village you're gonna bloody well struggle to get an in, a, yes. an income capitalized valuation um, you know and. And that's the thing, you know, you must, must, must work out your comparables before you put a penny down anywhere. You know, you can do a, you can do a lot of the research yourself. You know, worst case scenario, if you're struggling, OK, pay a surveyor to go and do a, what, like a pre-acquisition valuation. Yeah, okay. it doesn't have to be a full red book report. OK, now the, the, the red book is like the value is Bible. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I do them. I, I did one last, not last week, the week before um, 
for a client uh, and it was, uh, you know, a, a, it was less than a thousand pound. And I went out there and, and told him how much it was worth. I did one a few weeks prior to that. And admittedly, it was a, it was a very, very big property. It was in Derby. Um, but it was two and a half grand, but the property was worth like nearly three million quid. Yeah, but- exactly. So and I, th- I don't think a lot of people are aware that you can do that. You can appoint a valuer to go and do a pre-acquisition valuation to give you some certainty on what you're offering, which is a great thing to do. And I had a good example yesterday. I went to view a property on behalf of a client um, that we're sourcing for. And it's uh, at the moment, they're using the two flats upstairs, which were in really good condition, but they're using them for service accommodation. But it's the only service accommodation in that locality. There are no comparables, none. And yeah. so it's very difficult as a, when you're valuing to then go, really, I need to value these just, just as traditional rentals because actually I've, I've, I've got no comparable evidence. Now they have been running for a few years, so you can kind of, but they haven't really kept proper accounts. It's not a limited company or anything. So it's very difficult as a valuer to like pin your hat on that income. Um, and actually I just, I just said to the client, well, you know, their, per, their asking price is based on the income that's coming from running service accommodation the evidence isn't there it, it, it's not good enough to hang your hat on for evaluation and so you're going to have to value these as traditional asts um mm. in order to buy this mixed use property therefore if i were you i wouldn't offer more than about 100 grand less than they want mm. um you know and and that's where you can you can arrive at and it, it can really help but um look, i think that's been quite, really, quite really frankly useful. quite frankly the last thing you want because again the the, this, the guy who did the big uh, the big acquisition valuation for um he him and his dad were in a really successful contracting company um you know that and hence that that why they wanted but they'd never invested in commercial property and they just had no concept as to where where to even start because this property wasn't even on the market you see yeah um and and like i said it was a it was a big old lump of like you know big old building um this wasn't just a shop and uppers yeah Um, but what it can do is it you know it can stop you overpaying and again, especially if you are looking to buy with K, if you've got some cash, yeah, you're looking to maybe buy it, renovate it, rent it out, and then refinance it, yeah, then if you've overpaid in the first instance, you might have yours or maybe some investors' money tied up in it. So if you if if it's sort of 60% loan to value at the back end, you know, because again, your loan to values are a bit more conservative on commercial. Yeah. It, it, at, the, at, the, at, at the back end you may have money tied up and you may have 10 15 20 25 grand tied up and if that's a problem then you want to stop yourself having that problem and all right you've spent a, a few hundred quid up at the front end um but if it stops you you know stops you it, it stops you stopping your investing yeah, it stops you grinding into a halt because you can't get your funds back out and recycle them. And so, and that's what I always say is it's always worth paying professional because ultimately, you know, they've been and learned what they've learned. They know what you don't know. Um, and they can really save. They're, usually you'll get their feedback 10 times over because they'll save you from making that mm. mistake. Um, the, the, other, the other thing as well is, you know, just putting it out there, you can use this, you can use the valuation that they've produced because the, again, the comparables will be in there give it to the surveyor at the back end yeah that you're negotiating with for the purchase yeah uh, well no no no. i mean like when when you're going oh, at the end when you're refinancing yeah, yeah when, when yeah. you're going to have your mortgage valuation say right you know there you go this is what um this is what another surveyor has valued it at and, and these are the comparables that, that have helped justify that um yeah, that always definitely helps seeing what somewhat what another surveyor did is quite comforting for us <laughs> to just kind of look at and go Oh, okay, well, that's a start for 10. That's good. I'm, I'm comfortable yeah. here. I'll just I'll just go and check this, this and this. And then actually that's made my life quite easy. But um, mm. look, Ryan, that's been really, really useful. And I, I think as people can tell, we could talk about this all day long. This is what happens when you get two surveyors together. They could just talk about all this stuff all day long, but we won't because everybody doesn't have all day long and neither, neither do you. But the last thing that I was just going to end on is that um, you do run um, kind of a, a one day focused valuation course for investors um mm-hmm. i think you do, do you do it every month about once a month every other month 
every other month okay um so yeah. do you want to tell us about that and how how people can find out about it um you know what what does it consist of where do you do it um, how much is it yeah um it's in nottingham um it we, we cover everything from uh the red book um so a quick overview of that um comparables what should be in them you know how, how you present them to valuers how to find them etc um valuation packs so we, we go through that at the back end of the day uh yields so again i know we've talked about yields today but actually how, literally how to calculate them um and how to look at commercial property um or hmos again if, if you've got some of your students who are still doing hmos um so you know literally how to look at other properties work out what yield it's sold at and then apply that to your property um yeah in a again in a, in a in a scientific methodology um we then move on to actually valuing hmos um and, and how to do it properly and how to not guarantee but as near as damn it try and get that income capitalized valuation if indeed that's the, the the strategy you're following um and then we look at development sites how to how to do what's called a residual valuation or, or a development appraisal um, so, you know, working out your GDV, taking off all your costs and then coming out with a site value. Um, a quick overview on commercial leases um, and then commercial valuations to finish the day. So it's fairly full it sounds, on. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, yeah, it sounds like a day that your brain will probably be exploding from, but hugely useful. And I think you do this for a steal, by the way. So tell people what the investment is. It's £250. Yeah. That's so it. look, this guy knows his stuff. If you want to do a deep dive into valuation, um, you know me, there's not many people that I, I recommend you go and sit with for a day, go on a course. But actually, this is going to benefit you forever if you just understand a bit more of the detail of how to value straight from registered value, who's also investing in commercial property himself, which is the important thing um, for me because he comes at it from both sides. And then Nottingham. 250 quid, whole day, all that information. Uh, when's your next one? Um, I got an email, unfortunately. That I was do, doing one at the end of May, um, but the, the hotel about to cancel it. So if people, the way that I do it is if people just email me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's just ryan at stephensproperty.co.uk. Um, and I'm sure Kirsty, you, know, you can contact Kirsty and she, you know, she, she'll she'll yeah, we'll send it. We'll send out a link out, yeah. Yeah, uh, so it's just Ryan at Stevens, S T E V E N S, stevensproperty.co.uk. Um, and I will just happily email one uh, when I've spoke to the, uh, I always do it at the Hilton Hotel, uh, the Double Tree Hilton in, in Nottingham, just off Junction 26. Um, so it's nice and easy to get to, free parking. Um, it's a fairly technical day, like like you say, it's, it's fairly headachey. Um, we try and break it up a little bit. Lunch, is it, lunch and drinks and, and, and breakfast pastries are all included um it's not happy clappy um <laughs> no it's serious serious this is actually how it works That's yeah it, I mean. it's gonna it, we start at 10 o'clock finish at five ish uh depending on how the how the questions is it, it, it's a it's a fairly interactive course it's a bit yeah. back and forth um i try and not make it as dry as it sounds um but like no, you're, not, said, you're not dry ryan we can tell <laughs> <laughs> um like kirsty said that I, I, I genuinely feel, and people have you know sort of said it in the past, is once you learn it and understand it, then I, the way I try and structure the course is you can then apply it to most commercial property types. I'm not saying I'm not going to say everything, obviously. Yeah. You know, value uh, valuing data centers or mobile phone masks yeah. is a little, a little bit different and, and very you know very unique. But shops, offices, industrial, you know, medic, medical properties as well. You know, H, HMOs. You you're covered for ninety percent of property. Um, yeah, absolutely. Because we and I try and teach the fundamentals. Yeah, and I can. Um, I did. Um, I went to a, an event recently where Ryan did. Um, he he does. You know, kind of a one hour talk, and the value people took from that was amazing. So um, I do recommend if you you know you're scratching your head sometimes about well how can I how can I make the valuation and the refinance process easier? How can I make sure I'm not making mistakes? How can I understand? Um, Ryan is definitely a great person to help you understand. And thank you for spending your time with us today. You've definitely given us, well, everyone who's listening to this, some uh, great nuggets when it comes to valuation and just getting inside a valuer's, a valuer's head, which people think is a scary place, but it, it's not really. It's probably yeah. a bit more straightforward than they think. So thank you. 
Not a problem. Thank you very much.